Is it possible to place yourself in a virtual set without the need of a green screen? Oh! In this video, we'll explore the VFX techniques used for virtual production and the science behind it, from shooting the video all the way to the final image. But before we break this down, we need to go back in time. 1898. George Millier, a magician, is credited as the first to replace or combine backgrounds using in-camera tricks. In films like The Four Troublesome Heads, A Trip to the Moon, he used multiple exposures and matte techniques. That is what we call today masking or compositing. But with a strip of film instead. Can you imagine they had to go frame by frame and manipulate the strip of film just to place actors in a different background? They also made entire handmade paintings as a backdrop. It was another 40 years later when the first blue screen was invented by Lawrence Butler in the movie The Chief of Baghdad. Free after 2000 years. Butler developed the blue screen traveling matte process. Actors were filmed against the blue background, then combined with separately shot scenes using optical printers. But it was still an optical method, meaning the composite was done on film and they had to use different black and white negatives to extract the blue color. Then the digital revolution came to life in the 1970s and 80s. ILM brought chroma key into the computer age for films like Star Wars and Who Framed Roger What's Rabbit. Up, the introduction of green screens replaced blue in many productions thanks to digital cameras being more sensitive to green light. And today we have real-time keying, AI-based workflows for masking and rotoscoping, and even big lead wall productions just like you see in The Mandalorian. They have taken background removal to a whole new level. And this is what we now call virtual production. I tested out a few methods using a traditional green screen and some neat compositing tricks. The problem with that is that you need an evenly lit green screen and oftentimes it's hard to find a good location to set everything up correctly. And for this experiment I wanted to do something different and just use no green screen at all. So I decided to go outside using the real sun as the source of light. In virtual production one of the most important parts is to blend your real shot element with the digital world and composite the two together seamlessly. So when you have an outdoor scene with a backlit sun, we need to match the lighting as close as possible inside our 3D world. Once we have some footage to work with, it's time to figure out how to replace the background and cut out the subject. To do that, we need a couple of techniques and one of them is rotoscoping. And that is something we can actually do on our phones nowadays. For example, here I have a picture of my cat and when I select my cat on the picture, it made a cutout for us and that, in a nutshell, is rotoscoping. They use an AI called Convolutional Neural Networks, CNNs, trained on millions of images to recognize human shapes, cats, objects, hair, etc. Phones with multiple cameras or LiDAR sensors use depth maps to separate the foreground from the background. But it's obviously still not perfect but there are a couple of things we can do, for example having a clear distinction between the foreground element and the background element. Having enough light in the scene, lighting your scenes properly will also make it much more efficient. Just have an even background, good lighting and good contrast and you'll be fine. So for this project I used the magic mask tool in DaVinci Resolve. I rotoscoped it out in different parts so we have an overall clean extraction of the background. There's also a new technology I want to talk about and it's called relighting. Let's say we don't know the exact lighting conditions our 3D environment will have. How do you blend the two elements together? For this, Switch Light 3.0 from Beeple is the best option. It uses AI to extract a subject and create separate lighting passes. These passes can then be used to cast lights onto the subject after it's been shot. You want the light to be as flat as possible so the software can change the look later on. Anyway, it both uses AI technology and it all depends on the project and the shot you're working on. But what do we do with this now? This is where the artist's own creativity comes in and it's also the fun part of the process. For this scene, my girlfriend came up with the idea to make a windmill park at sea and make it look like she is dancing on it. So that is exactly what we created in 3D. We're gonna make people angry because we're going at 9 per hour. 
For the 3D windmill, I couldn't really find a good asset and the good ones were also really expensive, so I went ahead and made my own. With the 3D model ready, I'm gonna make the final render in Unreal Engine 5. It's primarily a game engine, but it's just so nice to have a real-time render with instant feedback. Before we make our scene in Unreal Engine 5, there's something I forgot to mention earlier, and it's called digital cameras. In VFX, we call this 3D camera tracking or match moving. We have to figure out how to have the exact camera move we did in the drunk shot inside our 3D world. Unfortunately, not all cameras have built-in 3D data, which will be such a time saver, but back in the editing, we can use a tool called the 3D camera tracker. This will lock onto various points in the scene. Based on the distance between all the points and 3D space, the software can then figure out the exact motion the camera made. With a bit of fine tuning, 3D alignment and scaling of the scene, we have an exact replica of the real camera digitalized. And the good thing about this method is that we have 100% accurate perspective shifts. Unlike a static video with no perspective shift, this will be very limited in our 3D program because it's just a 2D plane in 3D space. If you want to learn this exact process, I have a step-by-step -step virtual production masterclass available. It's a limited offer of only $5 a month inside the VFX community. Even if you have no prior knowledge of VFX, I will guide you through all the bells and whistles to make something from scratch, while also being part of a community full of like-minded artists. Now back to the video. Now we imported our digital camera in the 3D world. I also placed a human size reference for the position of where the actor is going to be. We can also import it directly in the 3D program, but I will do it separately in the compositing stage. Then I also imported the windmill and animated it, duplicating the windmill so it's a large windmill park along with a plane for the water. I played around with the lighting and textures so everything looks a bit more realistic. We have a water shader and some atmospheric effects like volumetric fog. Then I added a digital sun and made sure the position is roughly in the same spot like we had in real life. Then playing around with the properties to get the desired look we wanted for the scene, I also placed some additional fog cards to make it more dynamic. I was actually surprised by the results because all of it is in real time and we can adjust things as we go. Now it's time to put it all together. I rendered out the scene in Lumen, which is essentially a global illumination system that runs in real time. All right, with our 3D scene done, it's time to composite the two elements together. And for this, we're gonna use DaVinci Resolve Fusion. We start by color matching the pixel values with the color corrector. One trick that is also used in CGI is to replicate the imperfections of a camera lens. Think of some vignetting, chromatic aberrations, which can also be seen in a real lens. You can also add some noise or film grain to really blend in that CGI. Small subtle effects can really make a difference here. Then with some color grading and sound design, you should have a final shot that looks like this. From Millier's hand-painted backdrops to real-time 3D tools, you don't need expensive gear, a LED wall or a studio. Sometimes all it takes is some sunlight, a camera and your own imagination. And if this inspired you to create your own shots, be sure to check out the Virtual Production Masterclass. Hit that like and subscribe button and see you on the next one. Peace!